This is KAOS 89.3 FM Olympia Community Radio, and this is also Parallel University. Um, we're recording this on October 1st, and it will go to air on October 3rd, Thursday, 2024. So, uh, yeah, and... Uh, the following opinions heard are not necessarily the opinions of the staff management or underwriters of KAOS or the Evergreen State College. They are the opinions of the guests and the hosts. And uh, big thanks to our uh, student uh, activities board for uh, giving us the operating budget uh, to run a radio station at KAOS and the Evergreen State College for hosting the studios. Um, and also big thanks to um my engineer mr tom dyer who has his own music program on wednesday is called freeform radio it's all about the history of of northwest music and music groups and all things music and his program is uh, here heard weekly on wednesdays from one to three um and um yeah and also thanks to our general manager mr john hamilton who uh is back in the saddle after a hiatus hiatus and um yeah and hey a lot of good people speaking of other good people we've got mr bruce wilkinson uh who is running for uh, a pud spot um and i believe the the opponent is uh, linda oosterman uh, this is district one and this is a six-year regular term for the Thurston County Public Utility uh, Commission. Um, yeah, so uh, welcome to the program, Bruce. It's great to have you on board. Well, I and appreciate being on board. Thank you very much, Kim. It's great to see you. Great to see you, too. We haven't seen much of each other. In fact, I'm I'm uh, seldom seen in, in most social circles. Yeah, same here. <laughs> it's... Uh, I, uh it's kind of started with COVID and, and then, you know, so, well, you know, I really don't know if I want to be in a crowd very long with, and get COVID because after all, I've avoided it for uh, four years now. So uh, I don't want to break the momentum on staying healthy. So I just kind of stay away from huge gatherings and tight spaces. I yeah, same asking, way grocery stores you know if I'm, it's a crowded place i'll wear a mask or if i don't like it i'll get the hell out if it's too crowded <laughs> well that's the thing to do i mean you know i i i appreciate that i uh i'm often around lots of little kids and so <laughs> oh yeah so i you know there's really no escape and you can't just for me <laughs> but i think i I think it basically I get just low level uh, doses of all sorts of horrible <laughs> viruses and bacteria, which gives me a nice big immunity to everything. So that, <laughs> that's the theory anyways. Well, right. It, it, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I think that's the old adage. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is some truth to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our immune systems work on micro doses of poisons and, uh, different organisms so if you just get a little dose you know <laughs> it's true it's true um yeah. so you're you're running for uh pud commissioner pud commissioner and uh you're educated at, at the evergreen, evergreen state college and yes your I was. bachelor's in 2010 mm -hmm. like and and i'm i'm looking at your uh Thurston County Voters Guide uh, statement of of fact for your for your uh, your platform. Uh, Thank you, Public Utility Commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, now, you and I know each other from uh, way back when, and uh, the 2012 uh, public power campaign was. Uh, my introduction to local public utility politics. Yep, same here. And I got educated uh, greatly about the power of uh, private utilities in the state. And I started attending the, the uh, State Utility and Transportation Commission 
meetings and speaking out against things I didn't like. Yeah. Um, so, Well, good on you. That's a that's a tough one to do. I've been to a few of those meetings. It's a, it's a lot of information to wade through because they're doing kind of a lot there. And um, right, it's it's not just uh, it's not just su supporting or not supporting the sale of a, a private utility. For example, what happened to PSC when they uh, left uh, the local ownership. Uh, model and sold to an Australian banking giant, uh, Macquarie. And Yep. um, so, That's what got us all riled up, you know, back that was back in 2008, right? As the, the, yeah, uh, it, that's right. like, Yeah, it happened about four years before the advent of the uh, first uh, countywide uh, attempt at public power. Yep. I remember being at those meetings and hearing the testimony of the uh, the three commissioners on the public public uh, utilities and transportation commission, the three judges they call them, Mm Mm-hmm. Public Council from the Attorney General's Office that sat as a adjunct uh, professional on utility and transportation uh, decisions that were going to be affecting the public. And he stayed publicly, he said that he didn't think the sale of this uh, private utility to a foreign uh, corporation and
Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's supposed to be totally done burning coal at the end of 2025. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I have my doubts about that. I think that they're going to try and keep it open. Um, yeah, they want we to were... use that Williams pipeline gas to... I'm not talking about just that. I'm saying for coal. I think oh, that they're going to yeah. keep burning coal. After... You think they'll, they won't? Yeah. Gas. No, I, well, they have one one of them's gas right now, and the other one's still coal, and uh, and I think they're going to keep on going with coal. You know, they spent Transalta spent a lot of money on on investing in that coal power plant in the whole area, and you know they delayed it once the closing down of the second second one, and frankly, this so this coming year in twenty twenty five, we're going to see short, uh, we're going to be energy short in this area and i think it's going to take not that many brownouts in washington state and and not that much of a jacking up of, of energy prices here for the you know the governor and and the, and whoever's in charge to basically say well we got to keep that that coal power plant running i mean they already did that in germany you know they they decided to keep coal power plants burning again uh, in the past two years and that's a country that's got an enormous environmental movement you know the green party has a, a big percentage of, of the votes in that country and they kept the coal power plants on and i think right now with all the uh, they're talking about shortages of electricity and higher demand and it all culminates at next year and i think that we'll see it kept right back on and every environmentalist that that basically sold you know, made so many compromises to get that shut down and and had to back uh you know the electric company on so many of the issues that they wanted in order to get this supposed closed down the coal power plant i think they're going to be watching as that comes right back on and nobody cares what they say but i mean i could be wrong but i i see it coming and i you know i just i think especially with if we get some hot wars for the United States, which we're on the verge of, you know, what, who's going to be arguing if, if we're in World War III, whether or not the burning coal or not, you know, it's just not going to be a, a concern of people. So you watch, I'll be able to stay right back on. Yeah, but I, <laughs> quite possible. They can change their minds, but they have to, they have to go to the governor's energy siting committee, I think, to to run it by them and yeah. who knows? Well, I, mean, I don't know what uh, Bob Ferguson's view on all this is, but uh, 2025 uh, checks in a new governor, whether we get, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the ex sheriff of Pierce County or whoever he is. Uh, right. As our governor or whether or not we get uh, our current attorney general as governor. Oh, yeah, I don't think it necessarily matters. I mean, you know, uh, we Puget Sound Energy was sold during a Democratic governor to you know foreign powers, and so you know, I I think d despite who wins, I mean, they 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 give so much. It's it's something like seven hundred fifty different elected officials in Washington State get about two thousand dollars after they win it their election. It's like here's two thousand congratulations winning here's two thousand to your re-election campaign, and you know, and so that's that's everybody in the state. You know, Puget Sound Energy says dance, they'll dance, especially if if uh, you know they have some, you know, uh, Bill Gates or something backing them. Um, you know, these some of the the big billionaires in the state they absolutely get everything they want and they get it immediately. So I, I think that will. I think we'll see this happen. You know, all, these big tech companies are all saying how they need to have um, more energy for the AI stuff that they're doing. Um, Microsoft, you know, restart is restarting Three Mile Island, one of the, the the nuclear power plants there. And you know that you know Bill Gates is very supportive of, of nuclear power, which is which is fine. If that's what he wants to do. But I, you know, it's like a start just with that they're going to get power any way that they can and coal's cheap and that's what they'll need they need a lot of a lot of cheap 
coal, cheap energy. And, and you know, if that's what, what's available, they're going to keep it on. So, yeah, there's an interesting, uh, interesting movement uh, in uh, at Coal Strip, Montana, where PSE had interest in two of the three giant coal fired power plants there. Um, the agreement with the governor's energy site committee was that they were going to uh, divest themselves from those coal plants and uh, move away into renewables. Um, but I think the problem is, is that there's new hands uh, owning those coal strip plants. And I'm not sure if they're all going to be shut down. I think it's it's only one of them is going to be shut down and the other two are going to operate. And the electricity will continue to be sold into the BPA grid. So the effect of having PSE divest itself is is a is a moot point because they're still going to be operating and polluting the northern plains yeah yeah it's it's all just you know these people all work together yeah i think they sold they sold their interest in that for a dollar the trans alta or something like that right. it was, it was, you know and, and and meanwhile with there's agreement where they purchase the energy back and that's the same that happened down you know they don't they don't all own the coal plants down here they just buy 80 percent plus of the energy from them mm -hmm. and there's just a lot of evidence yeah you know, i don't want to dwell to this is speculation on my part and energy is not my thing as i already said you know in my uh, candidate statement i'm not for the uh public utility district there's a public utility district and going into electricity anymore uh, <laughs> i uh obviously i don't like that our uh electric companies foreign owned obviously i'd like that to change i just don't think that that the thurston pud is is uh i don't think that's the mechanism for that so i'm <laughs> so i you know i just wanted to bring that up and um oh, of course yeah i mean you got to have your platform statement um uh yeah and you know water i mean moving on to water we we could go into the uh utilities argument about source power of for electricity in, in, deep into that hole because there's plenty to talk about but um, yeah, it makes me very upset <laughs> yeah i get very mad about i get mad about puget sound energy so i don't like to, i i don't like to talk to them because i get just get just get very upset about it and i think one of the reasons that i'm i'm running is, is partially because i was so upset seeing that, that you know, my opponent, the incumbent, was elected the year we tried for the Thurston Public Power Initiative, and she was elected with the backing of Puget Sound Energy's money, the same money that defeated our initiative but when they spent like six hundred fifty thousand dollars. And oh. she was, she was, she also came into office through that money, and she was got a reelect. She was reelected through that money, and that upsets me. It's a water utility. Why should our the the private electric foreign owned electric company have you know any say over our democratic choice? And that's to me like you know kind of a final battle. I I, I do want to fight about that. Not that I want to go into like electric, but that I do want to pry their, their little claws off of it. Right. Uh, <laughs> it bugs me. It bugs yeah, me well, no end. I mean, that all comes down to Citizens United and uh, the dark money exactly was dumped into Linda Osterman's campaign in the last two weeks of the campaign. Uh, $13,000 yeah. was dropped into her campaign for uh, for those hit pieces on those glossy, uh, those glossy, you know, eight by 10 uh, mailers that got sent out. Uh, yeah. They were... And in my conversations with Linda, she denied that she had asked PSC to intervene in the election. She said she had nothing to do with the the mailers. And, yeah. uh, and of course, she, she says that because well, I mean, technically she's not allowed to, right? Because it's an independent committee, right? She's yeah, right. She's, she said that in 2012 as well. She's like, yeah, oh, I'm on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> I just took you know 
twenty thousand dollars for PSC or something, whatever it was. No, no, right. <laughs> there's there's the money up front too that is on the PDC, and then there's the dark money which is mm -hmm. not accountable. And I yep. I consider it to be anti democratic. Yeah, me too. I, that's that's what I hate the most. I hate the most that aspect of it, especially yeah. it's form. It's foreign. I mean. You know that matters but if we we supposedly we care about that and here we have you know i don't even nobody really even knows who owns puget sound energy or who controls it there's there's i, I tried to figure it out one time there's five boards above the normal corporate board of, of different companies that own puget sound energy it's just you know they just name them different things and and you know it's hard yeah, to pick, pencil it out. Who 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 calls the shots? You know, one of their the, their ultimate owners has a hundred billion dollars worth of energy investments or something, uh, mostly that they that they hold around the world. And it's like you know they they're not just like you know some nice guys who are just kind of holding that. Uh, you know, they're if if they're targeting specifically holding on to energy investments. A hundred billion dollars, and they're managing a hundred billion dollars as owners of of pri you know private energy holdings around around the world. Right. Those people are making decisions across all those, and and we can't you know let's not pretend let's, that 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 that's not what's going on. And who knows? I have no idea what these fund managers are making. I have no idea who who's getting money on the side. Of, you know how many people they employ to uh, you know rig our elections here <laughs> sure. and um yeah. and, to, and they're doing it with our with our rate money too we, we're paying them to do it you know it's a it's amazing yeah private equity firms are the dearth of de uh, democratic action in this country mm -hmm. because you know with it just one of the largest uh, private equity companies blackrock and uh holds like some ridiculous amount of uh Single family mortgages, something like 31% of all mortgages are held by BlackRock. And then there's another one uh, that is equally as bad. There's another big private funds equity agency yeah. that holds similar amounts. And yeah, they own the, the, the largest uh, share of something of just about every every major company on, you know, uh, in, in the Fortune 500 that they're, they're, they're like the the largest shareholder uh which is usually like only like eight percent of all these companies but that's that's enough for them to have the biggest clout and they're coordinating across everybody and it and it's uh so yeah it's all it's all very right it, it's all even, very rigged <laughs> even uh it has been admitted in state regulatory agencies for housing fairness that uh apartment owners like the really big apartment owners in the state of washington and probably across the country there's a website that that they they share amongst themselves of what the uh, bottom line will be for the lowest priced apartment like and that right. dollar amount is set by this group that fixes prices like a single bedroom studio apartment you know efficiency apartment just really a hole in the wall mm -hmm. is set at about eleven hundred dollars as the lowest they go if it's a deluxe apartment in a fancy neighborhood it could go up to two thousand for that little studio one bedroom mm -hmm. so but these people are all coordinating together to fix housing prices so yeah no one has an advantage in the market by offering uh you know these loss leader prices for rent so that low-income people can afford to live in these places yeah no so, it's true it's and here true. in seattle right now they had you know they passed that low income housing fund bill and they're supposed to have something like 400 million dollars in it well now the the city rated it for half of its money um and uh leaving it with only 200 million but you know there so they're but I, I was thinking about that a little bit i'm like okay so the city of seattle it's like oh finally Finally, they're going to do something. They're going to go out there and they're going to finally build some public housing. Well, what are they going to do? They decided to jump in and get this fund together right when the, the, the prices are at the top level. 
right. <laughs> and right when commercial spaces are sitting unused all across Seattle and but before the prices have dropped and I'm like and and here's you know to me it looks like the the private companies you know all these real estate firms are you know have just been like oh hey now's the time state now's the time city government come in and buy all of our our uh assets with, at the top level of price you know, from us, you know, <laughs> so I it's just, you know, I, it's amazing the, the way that things get manipulated all, all different ways. Hey, and, um, yeah, we're about, there it goes. <laughs> we're about halfway through this uh, interview and uh, we're speaking with uh, Mr. Bruce Wilkinson, who's running for uh, district uh, one, six year term public utility commissioner districts. In Thurston County in the 2024 election, and I am your host Kim Dobson. I forgot to mention that. Um, and this is KAOS 89.3 FM. Um, <clears throat> but I think we better get back to the business of water, uh, because be great. primarily the uh, public utility district that's its main uh, business is serving the public's water needs. And <clears throat> and one of the things that the public utility does uh, is they buy up uh, when private operators who are doing uh, housing developments, water supplies in the rural areas of the county, decide they don't want to manage their water uh, utility anymore. They offer it to the Public Utility Commission as a, a potential addition to the wells that they manage. And so that's one of the things the public utility does. And it does maintenance and testing of water and that it, um, it, it has, I don't know how many uh, uh, private wells are currently, uh, formerly private wells are currently now public utility wells, but uh, the number is growing because uh, developers don't like to hold these things forever. Once the houses are all sold, then they hand them off to the county and as a general way of doing business yeah there's a yeah it's a, right now the pud has about nine thousand customers that they you know um that they serve out of you know out of the out of the county it's not not nearly the biggest water utility in the county but uh we are the place where people go you know when when private water companies are ready to close down business they seem to go to the PUD, the PUD ends up uh, purchasing them. That's how we've gotten most of our uh, water systems. And, um, you know, there's something to that. Like uh, what what we're figuring out is that, uh, well, I just kind of, this is probably something I should have known a while ago, but if you're a private water company, you know, servicing a small neighborhood, let's say just with, with a, a small well, maybe you have one employee, that's it. But uh, you can't really change the rates without going to to the UTC, which is kind of a uh, a big headache for a tiny one one man show. Um, so when the PUD ends up, you know, when that person retires, maybe they, they just haven't changed the rates in in a decade or more, and they're they're ready to retire and they retire, and then and then the the neighborhood is like, well, what do we we don't know how to run this, we don't know how to fix anything. So it gets sold to the the PUD. Well, the PUD is able to set its own rates, and so what ends up happening is is like because they weren't able to increase rates for for a long time, they also weren't fixing things and maintaining things, right? So the PUD comes into a a a, a water system that has ridiculously low rates, and also everything's falling apart. <laughs> So they're in this terrible position where they have to end up, uh, they, they're buying it. So they get debt and then they have to increase the rates to like what's more normal. And then they have to fix everything that's been broken. And it, it has a tendency to really upset a lot of people. And I, yeah, I could I totally understand why, but, um, that's, that's been one of the problems that we have. And that's, but that's the responsibility of government. We're supposed to, you know, we're, we're, the place of last resort to uh, solve these things, and everybody needs and deserves clean drinking water. So, <clears throat> just to delve a little bit deeper into this issue, 
Um, when you talk about uh, the lack of maintenance in older wells and um, the, the equipment in these well houses, a lot of times the the one thing that gets ignored because it's the most expensive thing is is the replacement of a, a failing pump that is uh, blowing out uh, start capacitors and control boxes. So you can baby an old pump along by replacing that start box at the top of the wellhead. For about $200, you can replace that box and get a good quality box. But because the well, the pump is dragging down below because the bearings aren't any good anymore and the pillars are worn out. And it has to run longer to create 60 pounds pressure in the pressure tank. So it's actually using more energy. Um, there is a there's a price point there where you know you count the number of boxes that have been replaced in the last few years and and then you figure well this is this is a, a three horse pump in the bottom bottom of an eight inch casing at a you know 150 feet uh you have to bring in a crane uh to pull the old pump out because you've got a a standpipe uh you know from 150 to 300 feet long uh to pull out in sections and on and unhook each 20 foot section unthreaded if it's a steel hanger uh usually is um steel water pipe and then all that pipe is rusty and needs to be replaced too as well so you get a three horsepower uh gold pump with a uh a really nice motor on it you know high quality motor and it's going to cost you like uh you know, three to four thousand dollars just for that three horsepower pump for a public utility. Then you add on the costs of paying the the uh, the pump servicing guys with their cranes and and the crew that it takes to undo all that pipe and put it put it all back in and put new wire in it, and then update the pressure tank and and the new uh, start start box and wiring. So you you can easily hit a hit an eight thousand dollar price point by the time you get done with all of that oh wait yeah that'd be that sounds lower than what it would cost <laughs> well it probably does cost more than that but i'm just just from my experience with well, oh yeah totally i imagine As, private wells even they get expensive yeah I'm, maybe we should hire you to come down there and fix this stuff no i don't have a pain <laughs> I, uh, I know how to <laughs> i know how to change start boxes and and do all the plumbing and the pressure tanks, but I, yeah. don't, I don't have a crane to pull pumps and I haven't had that experience. Yeah, no, I, I know. I hear you. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a lot to do. It, and it, and it is, as, as you said, it's a lot of, uh, it's maintenance work. That's something that America doesn't necessarily do that well. You know, I think we could probably save some money if we, you know, not only if we pulled it out, but, you know as well as I do, some of that stuff was built really well. You throw some, some, you take it apart, you you clean it up, put in some like some new bearings, and you put in that that the the type of grease that we have now, which is the synthetic grease, you know. And you know we could get a lot more out of it. I, you know, I wonder today if if we we're actually looking at that or if we just buy and replace. No, so and it's toss always, away. always replace because. The way those pumps are put back, the way they're put together is, is uh, it's not cost effective to take the motors apart. They're sealed stainless steel, and yeah, I understand and, that. You yeah, know, they're just and the impellers start to wear out, especially if there's any sand in the wells. You know, if you don't mm -hmm. have if you don't have the right screen in it, you're going to get a lot of powder. Uh, you know, what they call powder sugar sand mm -hmm. in some of the wells in. But I imagine, can you matter. imagine in like the, you know, six years from now, six years from now, I mean, we're, we're, we're a nation that's in a lot of debt, <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, this as well as I do, that we are a nation in huge amounts of debt. We have people turning on, on the U S dollar. Um, we have uh, a lot of our assets as a nation, our imaginary financialization stuff. And we get a lot of our, the stuff that we need from China, which is a country that we're constantly poking at and saying that you know 
with a lot of, of, of stories talking about how we're going to go war against them. We're going to go war against China, Russia at the same time. And meanwhile, what are we going to do about getting getting our water pumps? I'd love to be able to find water pumps in the United States. And I think we do have some water pumps in the you know companies in the United States. But then the price is even going to get uh, even higher. And so I, I, I worry about these sort of things. I don't think many other people do. Um, you know, but this is the time period when I think maybe it's worth, it's worth being concerned about, about these sort of things. Are we going to, do we have, uh, have we, do we have pipes on hand for, for basic maintenance? Did we, have we bought, if we had bought pipes, extra, you know, 20 foot sections of, of steel pipes and had them stored, if we had bought them, uh, you know, even five years ago, they would be probably worth double the price today. Uh, you know, um, maybe not that much, but quite significant. And what's that? What's the value of those pipes going to be um, in four years' time? You know, I mean, these are the things I think of a lot, and I think that's something that probably Linda Usterman doesn't think about at all. You know, um, and you know, so I so I do wonder. I know that. As you said, you know, of course it's it's cheaper to, to buy and replace. But yeah, let's you know, are we are we tossing it in the scrapyard, are we putting it away in a corner and then you know, having somebody on downtime, you know, poking away at it, trying to see what what, what can be done. It's just a, just a thought. Just a thought. I think yeah. we should have that for all sorts of things. I think we need to in the future, you know, let's hope that this you know it we're gonna have to we're gonna have to figure out, you know, there's gonna be something of a, a economic awakening, and that's gonna to happen to the world. All of a sudden, at some point in our lives, very soon, we're going to no longer be able to call ourselves consumers anymore, which was a crazy thing that with that we ever thought of ourselves just as consumers. We're we're the nation of the world that gets to consume. Everyone else produces for us. Hey, that's no longer going to be the case going forward. You know, we're going to consume and we're going to produce. We're going to probably have a, have some trouble. We're not gonna, just going to buy our way out of things. We're not going to be able to buy our way into bigger and bigger wars. Like after, you know, what George Bush said, you know, go out there and shop after like 9-11. Well, you know, I saw I, this is just something I think about and as, a, a you know, um, going into utilities, water. We're, we're going to need to, um, we're going to be, we're going to need to be prepared. Um, we're going to be, need to be prepared to keep things running and in good shape. And we need to, to be able to service it completely ourselves and with the people of our community and the resources we have in the area and in the, in the, in the county and the state and in the country. Um, and I would love to see us, you know, things not be as bad as i think they're going to be in the next six years but uh unfortunately i wouldn't bet on it well yeah i have my concerns too about um uh, about the new cold war and especially with china china is not our enemy it's Ch american companies have relocated there this is the big lie that the government fails to talk about is that you know when NAFTA and the free trade agreements allowed corporations to operate, uh, you know, assembly plants in other countries. Uh, we saw a flight of American companies to China and to Mexico. So what that's done is it's hollowed out the uh, working class uh, union jobs in this country and put us in a terrible bind, especially when we're talking about uh, sanctioning and, and uh, you know, adding tariffs to the costs of Chinese produced goods. Yeah. Even if they are, even if they're American companies building pumps to uh, American spec specifications in China, mm -hmm. it's still gonna cost the US consumer, whatever that tariff is. and some of the new tariffs are a hundred percent on electric cars. So, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's and that's a, that's a, that's a tax that's on Americans by the government. People don't realize that, uh, that tariffs are, are what we pay in this country. 
Well, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. That's the dirty little secret is that mm -hmm. all these um, cold warriors, mm -hmm. they don't really care about uh, whether yeah. or not it costs more for American consumers for yeah. these Chinese made. Uh, I think it, it's fine for things to cost cost more for American consumers. You know, I mean, we just we we need to, to learn to value uh, what, you know, the value of, of material items better. Than we that we than we have over the past like fifty years, people need to we need to have uh, at some point we really need to get to the level where uh, maintenance well we should have the right to fix things, but you know I mean to to buy a whole new thing uh, rather than fix it you know which has been kind of like the I mean you're a mechanic so you understand. That how many times out of ten do you are you, do you just go out there and say go out and buy buy a whole new part because the idea of fixing whatever it is, or buy a whole new car because the cost of fixing it is is going to be too much, and I you know and I, I just don't think that I think we're we're going to have to get away from that as a as a world you know and um, mm. and so and I think that's going to happen too. And I don't blame China for that. I think, you know, I've, I've got nothing against China. China isn't making all the right choices. They're investing in and in, uh, in creating a moderately prosperous society, as they say. <laughs> well, and, they've, uh, they've pulled a billion people out of poverty in the last 40 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, in a lifetime that, you know, yeah. people act like, uh, you know, the, the people of China, they actually they, they actually do like their government people are like oh that's just propaganda no 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 the people are still alive who won the war in 1949 you know and were basically peasants and went from that to being on par or with the united states or even um passing the united states to many areas uh today and that was one person's lifetime somebody in their in their you know 80s or 90s they they saw that whole thing they saw their life uh, improve and their material well-being improve and the lives of their children improve and um and people appreciate their government there and we you know are looking at our uh it working in reverse you know i think uh, a lot of people who are um who are younger than me are looking uh, at me and and the people older than me and they're saying wow you guys had it good <laughs> and i don't i don't know uh, i went to tell them but you know i'm i would say that, that like it's uh we need to to change how we do things here and it's going to be a hard transition i just hope that we don't blow up the world before we make that transition i got yeah somewhat on my yeah, website I've got some articles about foreign policy. I had somebody criticize me. It's like, well, you know, you should have, why do you have that on your campaign website? I'm like, well, you know, we have the, you know, fourth largest military base in the world right next door. You know, well, most of their soldiers live here. You know, I, I think it does kind of matter to our community, you know, whether or not we go into World War Three or not. <laughs> but uh, maybe I shouldn't bring that up when I, in my well, run. But uh, yeah, you know, we, what can I say? Yeah, I know there's, I mean, the the world is uh, hot mess, it's complicated, and it's a hot mess, <laughs> as you say. And I, my my personal view is that militarism never decided its politics by war. And, it's horrible. Yeah. And ambassadors and peacemakers are the people we need to put in the State Department, not warmongers, as we have yeah. now. And the Pentagon has is keeps writing these blank checks for billions of dollars for weapons. Meanwhile, uh, our infrastructure in this country is falling apart. We have we have people on a, that are priced out of the housing market and living in the streets. And most of our municipalities are are claiming that these homeless people are being shipped into our community. But you know we have lots of poverty in Thurston County. It's not, it's visible only because these people have no place to live. And it's not because other pe other counties are shipping their homeless to Thurston County. That's the big lie. It's just to, it's just the, uh, 
uh, way of circumventing the actual uh, inequality of of uh, wages and uh, having minimum wages so low you can't afford to have an apartment. Uh, you know, having to have two jobs just to afford an apartment is uh, it's a criminal act of uh, economy uh, uh, destroying the lower classes and and then calling it their fault, blaming them for their poverty when we really don't have a fair economic system. Yeah, um, no, it, it's, I, I mean, we're going to set it better myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're we're just blaming the victims and it's um, it's we, it's we do that all over the world. You know, we don't yeah, do so, that just here. You know, we're doing that, you know, in other places, other all around the world. And I, I really want to see us take responsibility. I want to see the, the people take responsibility. I want to see the rich people take responsibility. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think this in this in this society today, there are so many people who are doing extremely well, while there are people who are who are, uh, you know, basically living just the worst lives it's hard being on the street in northwest that's yeah I'd, I, that's a worse situation than than being poor in like a uh underdeveloped country that being poor in in and in, in homeless in the united states is probably a much worse situation a much more difficult and terrible life it's not as bad as, as being you know in the middle of like a war uh, in some country but as far as poverty in other countries because at least usually in, in countries, underdeveloped countries, people might not have access to certain things, but at least they're in it together. There's more community. A lot of times they'll even have uh, some, you know, uh, place that they can rest their their weary bodies at night and feel protected. Um, and everyone's in it together. And here, you know, you're, I just, just, it just seems awful. Just living on the street, watching Teslas drive by <laughs> right next to you with people yeah. oh. not even paying attention. And it's, it's got to be the, the worst, worst poverty, the worst feeling here worst. compared to other places. You know, Olympia actually has more opportunities for low income people to get help. Um, but some communities, I'm not saying Olympia, some communities have criminalized homelessness and so you can serve jail time for being homeless and i guess that's one way to get people off the streets is put them in jail cells you know but that's yeah, terrible way right i know it's it's just <laughs> why criminalize poverty it's just it's just a it's a way of removing what what uh yeah. wealthy neighborhoods call a a blight of homelessness or yeah. houselessness you know they're considered to be blights well what have we done in our e economic system to create this uh, scenario it's yeah. it's uh, capitalism has not served uh, the lower class members of our society very well and yeah i'm not i'm it not doesn't work. necessarily i'm not as against capitalism as as maybe i was in my youth i am 100% against billionaires though that's my that's that's a kind of an arbitrary cutoff line, but I, you know, just there shouldn't be any. You know, no. if, if if you want if you if you're gonna have billionaires, that means you can't have democracy. If you're gonna have billionaires, that means actually you can't have uh, markets that work. You know, I mean, you literally can't even have capitalism with if you have have two thousand plus people with that are billionaires. You know, up to two hundred billion. They can buy out all their competition. They can buy out their politicians. You know, there's nothing that they can't buy. There's no responsibility. Plus, you know, there's one thing when like there's like a, a you know a regular wealth, regular wealth. Okay, well, you know, all right, I can understand that to some degree. I've, it's take me a while to get there, but you know, hopefully the people who are just kind of normally wealthy, they usually have some connection to place and to the people. And res feel responsibility to that. These these international billionaires, they have none of that. Jeff Bezos, he just said, "See you later, Washington." As soon as we we tried to pass, um, you know, a small tax that would have affected him, he just peaced out, and went straight to Florida, where he doesn't have to pay anymore. He couldn't care at all about the people in his area. You know, this is not the same sort of crowd. 
as a normally wealthy people. Right. I have something to say about that. The incident I believe you're talking about is when uh, Sama Sawant tried to institute a, she was organizing a low income housing uh, coalition there and they were organizing on behalf of Amazon workers in the Seattle area that couldn't afford to live in Seattle. They had to, they had to take buses in from Pierce County and Snohomish County and the rural areas of King County to get, get to work every day. So they're spending two hours traveling on public uh, transportation um, to get to work. And then they're only making like, you know, 15 bucks an hour. So they can't even afford to pay rent where they live, even in the rural parts of the county. So what the proposal was by the city, Seattle City Council is a head tax of $500 a head that uh, Bezos would have to pay for all their warehouse workers so that they would, on top of their $15 an hour wages, to subsidize their rents within King County. Mm -hmm. And uh, you should have yeah. seen the ruckus that Bezos raised over that. You right. Guys, friends on yeah. the council and bought off a few more people on the council to mm -hmm. to vote that uh measure down mm -hmm. that and, and and what the capital gains i don't know all the ins and outs of all that but you know that that was another one but yeah it just just he was just gone meet it you know he doesn't need us and and so many people are like that the the, the billionaire class you know that that you know they're just no holding them accountable and so, and, you know, and they're not tied to place. So, it's, you know, it's That's just, right. these, these are people that, that you cannot count on when things get tough, they're going to do exactly the opposite of what you want to do. And that's what we're seeing in America today. We're seeing this, you know, well, this out of touch elite running both parties and they're doing, and they're, they're taking us in directly the opposite direction. And too many people in like, kind of like the managerial class or the technocratic class, you know, their, their paycheck depends on, on basically them, you know, <laughs> ignoring all, all this, ignoring what's, what's bad for, for America that, that these power elite are doing across our country and saying nothing and watching, you know, and, and you see all these turns in the media and all of it changes your, your show. It's like the one of like, uh, maybe one or two shows that has any local content news that everyone gets to consume in this in this area and um and and it's it's shameful you know being part of this i have not had a single debate with my opponent not one you know there's no debates at all i've had yeah uh, i mean it's shocking that you know this is not this isn't really a democracy if you don't have <clears throat> debate and you don't have media local media you know how is it is it a democracy whatsoever hey, what happened to the you know, the one place you can go in the county to get a debate happening is the League of Women Voters. They're actually mm -hmm. about the only fair-minded group that's doing uh, public forums with debates on candidates, and and they don't allow the the debates to be gamed. Um, yeah, they were kept. The League of Women, Women Voters used to run the presidential campaign mm -hmm. debates too until the demo pubs and the republicrats decided that uh, <laughs> that they were not going to allow the league of women voters to to uh, operate on a platform of fairness instead they had to make a commission a bipartisan commission to decide what the debate parameters were going to be yeah and this is what we have now it's a it's a very old oh, yeah. and there's no hard questions with there's uh, very little uh, public policy being discussed. It's mostly a personality contest. And, you know, this is anyway. So we've got about uh, <laughs> we could go on and on here, but I, of course we could. Oh, my goodness. And we should, probably should get us worked up into a rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> thank you, but, by the way, Kim. I, I've enjoyed this. Yeah, my campaign, you know, I mean, I, it's hard to know how you're doing these days um you know as 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 a I, you know i don't know if i've i've said but uh it's a it's a low budget campaign it, right now it's it's where we've raised almost matchingly about zero dollars 
uh, each. You're not you're not taking any corporate money though. That's the important part of it. And no, I'm not. And of course, and like I said, you know, she last time she there was an independent committee that she has no idea about. In air quotes. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> dropped thirteen thousand on our campaign, and you don't know until November first. That's when it's reported, right? You know, yeah, right, right before the election. <laughs> so you know, so that's probably going to happen again. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, in the meantime, I, it's it's that may or may not have have much sway over, over people. But I really, it's really grassroots. It's like it's mostly we're you know. It's mostly people talking to people, spreading the word, talking, you know, and I hope that people will contact me about things. And um, I have a lot of, of ideas, one, uh, positive ideas. Like I was, uh, I'm interested in having some sort of water festival. One of the problems with the Thurston PUD is that we take a tiny, tiny, just a little bit of smidgen of tax money from the people. But because we only have like 9,000 customers that we serve, we don't serve the entire county. So I wanted to try and put um, to try and do like a countywide water festival, something that would educate people about water, about the challenges we face going forward into the future, and uh, to get also to get people around uh, ideas of conserving water. We need, definitely need that. We need you know, food, not lawns. You know, planting native plants, all that sort of things. How to deal with leaks in residential areas. And that'd be for everyone. It's not just for, you know, it's for everyone in Thurston County. So that's, that's a, that, that got me excited. Of course, you know, I love, I liked organizing stuff like that. It's like, takes me back to the old days when I used to do that all the time for all sorts of issues. So, yeah, we're just about out of time, Bruce. I'm sorry, but. We, oh, wonderful. I appreciate it. I mean, we, I mean, we could have a, a second conversation later too, as well. So, uh, you know, the, the ballot drop is on the 10th. So. People yep, are going sure to start is. voting. This is the this is the first, and by the time this goes to air, it will be the third. Yep. So, well, if they want to see me, if they want to see me in office, they they have to tell their friends. They have to share it. Get on that 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 social media and yeah, share Bruce, it. Tell whisper Bruce. it to people at the coffee shops. I don't know. Yeah, Bruce Wilkinson <laughs> for public utility commissioner. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It'll be fun. I, I think I'll do a good job. <laughs> I've got the energy, you know. <laughs> That's the way yeah, I've got the energy. Uh, Commissioner Stearns, he's a he's a friend. He's a good guy, and and it would be me and him. We'd we'd be able to 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 have fun and do get some things done together. We work well together. So, yeah, manage um, those public water systems in a in a good way and a fair way for the public, and uh, uh -huh. keep on making those decisions that provide clean drinking water for everybody in the county that is served by the Public Utility Commission. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Bruce. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is KAOS 89.3 FM Olympia community radio. This is also parallel university. I'm your host, Kim Dobson. And the preceding comments are not necessarily opinions of the staff management or underwriters of KAOS. They're the opinions of the guests and the hosts. And once again, thank you so much for coming on the air, uh, Mr. Bruce Wilkinson. And, and thank uh, you. And thank look, you to chaos for uh, Bruce's uh, box on his uh, on the on your ballot you're going to receive on the 10th. Um, and I mean, I think it's time for some new blood uh, there at the Public Utility Commission. And I, I think Linda's been there a long time. You know, that's my opinion. She's nearing 80 years old and she is 80 years old. Yeah, actually. Yeah, it's a six year so, term. So, which you know. And some I mean, eighty year olds can handle it, but uh, you know, uh, but some it is pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> My understanding too is that she's yeah, I, I don't want to. She's be mostly racist, checked but... out, to be honest. It sounds <laughs> like. Uh, <laughs> I am. Not I mean, I mean that in a positive way. She's just yeah. you know feeling like she's retired, you know, which is how she should feel. You know, I've got nothing against Linda. You know, I just, I just think that this would be her last term if she ran. I don't think she'd. Why would she want to put a lot of energy into new ideas and new things? You know. That's right. Oh, well, well, I best of luck to you, Bruce, and perhaps we'll have another conversation here before the uh, too many ballots get returned and back back to the auditor and uh, and hopefully you'll prevail. Thank you. I hope so. We'll see. All right. All right. You have a great day, Bruce. You too. Thanks see you again. This interview and thanks to all of our listeners for supporting chaos.
This is KOS 89.3 FM, Olympia Community Radio. And that is that is it. Uh, gotta gotta say goodbye and gotta find the off button. <laughs>